What's going on guys? So welcome back to another Sunday vlog. Um, I don't know why, but like lately I've been shooting so many, like I've been starting so many of my vlogs in the evenings because that's what I feel like my creative juices are flowing and usually I tend to do my laundry and things like that as you guys just saw in the, uh, in the evening, which usually prompts a lot of ideas of things that I want to talk about in a vlog. So that's why, that's why I've been starting them out here in my bathroom because the lighting is good and whatnot. But uh, yeah, so I just finished my uh, 16 week dieting, uh, which went really well. Super happy with how it turned out. Now, uh, it's not my first rodeo. I have done um, dieting in the past where I've cut down to like uh, pretty low body fat percentages, like maybe around 12, 13. Uh, this one, I kind of finished at around 14, 13%, I think. Uh, but I was pretty heavy at the start of uh, January and February, uh, I was pretty heavy. I think I got up to like about 195 pounds, which I hadn't been in quite a while. Like even during the pandemic, I think I was running a lot, which uh, kept me somewhat decently lean. And uh, yeah, so I feel good right now, honestly. I'm at a good body weight. I'm around 173 pounds right now. And uh, yeah, clothes fit really good. Um, mentally, I feel healthy. You know, and I'm just trying to now uh, not bulk back up, but uh, get back up to about 2,000, 2,200 calories and then um, see what my next goal is. Now, the objective is really just to kind of like stay lean and uh, maybe lean bulk or like just, you know, um, stay around 13, 15% body fat uh, year round and focus on my nutrition. Uh, that's one thing that I really want to tackle um, over the next half of the year and potentially for a lifetime. Uh, during this vlog, I'm also gonna show you guys some of the pickups that I've acquired over the last few months. Uh, I got a new pair of Ramones, and uh, I have a new pair of Marnie loafers, and I've been adding like little pieces here and there into my wardrobe, which I'm really loving. Um, the only problem is I find myself not wearing it as much, man. Um, the Marnie loafers was actually a gift from a client, which is pretty cool, and he's one of my good clients based in Vietnam. And uh, yeah, and then the Ramones, I picked them up because I used to have a pair and uh, yeah, I got rid of it and now I got a new pair and they fit great. I've been wearing them a lot with the uh, carpet. All right, what's going on guys? So, gonna quickly get into my recent pickups. So, um, this is stuff that I've acquired over the last couple of months. I'm actually gonna start with my most recent pickup, which is these beautiful Rick Owens Ramones. Now, um, these, I used to have these back in the day, like about three, four years ago, and I got a lot of wear out of them, but ended up selling them on Grailed uh, for a pretty good steal, to be honest. But ever since I sold them, I've kind of been thinking about them and like really just like contemplating on purchasing a new pair. So I went ahead and I did that and honestly, I am so, so happy. These tend to sell out pretty quickly anywhere. Like honestly, the only place that you can find them these days is on Grailed and usually they're already worn. Um, but I usually prefer to purchase my stuff brand new. So I usually wait for Essence to carry them and then I'll go ahead and use my employee discount for them. So these ones, there was actually one pair left in a size IT42 tend to wear IT42 in the Rick Owens Ramones. I feel like they fit perfectly. They're not too loose on the sides and they just fit me great in an IT42, which is actually my usual boot size as well because I do like my shoes to fit a little bit more snug because I have narrow feet. So yeah, um, but nothing to say about these, man, other than this is just a classic Rick Owens pair of sneakers. Uh, the Rick Owens Ramones will always be a classic in my opinion, uh, just like the Converse, you know. Uh, it's just one of those pairs that as soon as I put them on, I'm just so comfortable, but on top of that, I have so many pieces 
in my wardrobe that I can wear them with, which I absolutely love. Like lately during the summer, it hasn't been too hot, like I said in my previous vlogs. So I've been wearing a lot of cargos. Like I've been styling these a lot actually with uh, Sanjay's cargos from the old season and even the new season, the brown ones, but also the black ones. And I love how that look um, turns out. Uh, anytime you style, a Ramon's high top or even low top with a pair of cargos. It just always works so perfectly. I love the design of these uh, Sanj cargos and just how well it complements the Ramon's. You know, I think actually once I got this pair, the brown one especially is when I kind of really, really was like, I need to get myself a new pair of Ramon's. And luckily there was one size left in my size and I ended up picking it up. So yeah, that's it on the Ramon's. Very simple, straight to the point. As you guys can see by the outfit, I mean, this has really been my go-to outfit this, this summer so far. You know, we have the shirt here that I've made a video on. This is a shirt by, uh, uh, this is a shirt by Forme d'Expression. It's a, uh, uh, made in Japan, I believe. I bought this shirt a couple years ago and it always just comes in so clutch during the summer, especially during the summer because I can just kind of wear it like this or I can throw on a, a white tank top. It just complements my trousers so, so well, whether it's a beautiful pair of cargos like these or just a nice pleated pair of trousers, this shirt is my go-to during the summer and it's breathable, it's very loose fitting, which I love. And uh, yeah, right, so moving on to the second piece, we have Marnie Loafers. Now these were actually a gift by my client based out of Vietnam, so thank you to him. And I actually don't own any loafers apart from my Tom Brown loafers, which I usually tend to only wear them whenever I wear the full suit. So, and lately I haven't had anywhere to go where I need to wear a full suit. So I haven't really been getting a lot of wear out of those. And to be quite frank, they actually are just so uncomfortable, the Tom Brown loafers. That was definitely not my best uh, purchase because I don't even think I'm gonna be wearing them all that much. Be not, not because um, I don't like them, just because they're so uncomfortable. They're very sturdy and just uncomfortable to wear. So uh, getting this Marnie pair of loafers was just such a good gift. And uh, I wanted to get it in the green colorway just because I already have so much uh, black in my wardrobe. As you guys know, I have boots. Most of my boots are black and uh, you know, my derbies as well. And I felt like this color would still be a good color that would complement a lot of pieces in my wardrobe, hence why I went for uh, this, you know? And uh, yeah, I absolutely love the chunkiness of it. It's got like a great sole. They're very comfortable right away. Uh, I went with an IT42 once again, just because again, I do like my shoes to fit a little bit more on the snug side so that, you know, um, I don't have any gaps, especially for loafers. Loafers I really love when they fit tight and proper because they usually tend to have gaps on the side, which I absolutely hate, just like boots. So um, these I got in 1942, as I said, and all around just such a great pair, very comfortable right away, very smooth, uh, full leather. And uh, one of the things that I actually like was obviously the chunkiness as, we, as we've seen over the years, like that's kind of been more on the popular side, whether it's like Marnie or even Rick Owens and different brands just kind of making chunkier shoes. And I'm not mad at it. I love these. I love the way I've been able to incorporate them in my wardrobe once again with some cargos. Like I did style them on my Instagram with a pair of Junjay cargos, which I felt like was a good look, especially with sort of like the a purple uh, cardigan mixed with like a nice simple black pair of cargos and just a pop of color on the shoes with these uh, Marnie green loafers. Uh, this is definitely gonna be a pair that I can kind of see myself wearing all around really, you know, uh, it's pretty versatile. I could style it with a nice suit, but I could also style it with something a little bit more simple. Like for example, if you look at this look here, the cargos with the cardigan is more of a colorful look, but then I could have gone for like a black cardigan or even just a t-shirt with some cargos. And if I wanna add something a little bit different on the shoe side, I could just opt for these Marnie loafers. So definitely a good add into my wardrobe. I don't have anything like this right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, so looking forward to wearing them. So many things that I could style them with in my wardrobe, which I always love. <sighs> So uh, you guys saw the recent pickups and there is one comment that I recently got on my YouTube channel that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Uh, I'm having an espresso right now. I'm actually not going to the gym today. I, I, at least I don't think so. Usually around this time I head out to the gym, but I've been trying to switch out my schedule a little bit just to see if my sleep can improve. Obviously having a double shot espresso at 4 p.m. definitely isn't the way to go, but I was just so tired because I was very productive today, which 
uh, I really love because I've been kind of struggling to find the energy and to find the a consistency in my productivity, especially because like I have to kind of mostly juggle the nine to five with some of the things that I want to shoot and whatnot. And uh, yesterday I had to go into the office. We had a Gucci styling session, which was really, really fun. I'm going to be posting some pictures on my Instagram. So definitely make sure to follow me on there. But uh, yeah, we're going to get into this comment. And I thought it deserved like a little bit more attention because I feel like a lot of us have dealt with this or are dealing with this. So um, I'm going to read it out to you guys and you guys feel free to honestly leave any comment of support or just in general what you guys think, how you guys have dealt with these type of encounters. Bro, how do you deal with criticism from people about your dress sense and clothes? For instance, I bought a kimono and looks a bit effeminate and I've received weird comments from friends and strangers. I also have Doc Martens quads and I receive weird comments. These, uh, the compliments outweigh the negativity, to be honest. I'm a really confident dude. My confidence isn't hinged on compliments slash critique, but the critique gets to me sometimes. How do you push past the negativity and stay true to your style? Really keen to hear what your views are on this. So I feel like everyone that's into fashion has definitely dealt with criticism about how they dress in the past, right? Especially if you're maybe flamboyant, if you just, your style is a little bit more out there than the average Joe, you're gonna deal with people kind of like mocking you or even just really close friends just asking you what the hell are you wearing? So before moving to Montreal, I lived in uh, Ottawa, right? And Ottawa is the capital city here in Canada. And honestly, most people just work for the government or the bank. I was actually also working for a bank and uh no one really dresses and like in at least in terms of like fashion and stuff like that people just look put together but no no one's style is like over the top right and i dealt with this countless times you know uh, especially in university you know my pants is too tight or what kind of boots are those and the only way to deal with these type of things at least for me the way that i dealt with it is really just to trust yourself and trust the fact that you just are expressing yourself more than these people probably would because they're too scared of how they would be perceived, right? So I always say that like, you know, any negativity or hate always comes from beneath. It never comes from someone that's busy doing shit, right? So a lot of the times when, uh, and you will get this happening a lot, especially if you're still like sort of like in your early 20s and you go to uni and you get people like sort of being like, what are you wearing? Why are you dressing like this? And it'll be people that you actually care about, you know, because everyone wants to have a group of friends, people that they can hang out with. And it won't really make sense, right? And one of the biggest things that I noticed was when this started kind of becoming my work and I started making money from it and my Instagram page grew and I started a YouTube channel and you know, people showed love. Like I started connecting with other people from all over the world that have kind of dealt with similar is issues or and are just now all in a way kind of like making their dreams come true by getting out there and, and starting a social media page or starting a clothing line. And one of the biggest things that I realized was all those people that were mocking you or that were being funny and like giving you backhanded compliments or just like, you know, making jokes, they're the first ones to come and be like, oh man, you're doing so great and whatnot. And now they actually start taking you seriously. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go and do that and start like a channel or start like a, a social media page. But one thing that I want to encourage anybody that's kind of like, feels a little bit shy in terms of expressing themselves, in terms of fashion, in terms of clothing. It's just to understand that like you getting yourself out there, you are already doing half if not more uh, than the average person, you know, because most people will want to do stuff and they fear how they're going to be perceived or they fear what their friends are going to say. So they actually end up never doing shit, right? But you don't want to end up, you know, at a certain time in your life where you say to yourself, oh, I wish you know, I, I wish I would have tried on these clothes when I was younger. I wish I would have started um, this YouTube page when I was younger. Like you just want to be in a position where you can just express yourself. And the earlier you realize that people are going to criticize you anyway, right, is the minute that you stay to yourself, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to just keep expressing myself, you know, and, and, and like this, this guy said, he said, look, I'm already a confident dude, but sometimes it gets to me. And I'm telling you, it's gonna get to you. You know, anybody, whenever you receive something negative, it gets to you. The only thing is what do you do once that happens, right? Because yeah, okay, your mind would think about it and you would dwell on it, right? But it's always to understand that it's an emotional thing. So emotions are always fleeting in my opinion, right? So you feel like some type of bad energy, you feel bad, but if you allow it to just 
you know, come and go, you'll be back on your shit in no time. So you will start dressing the exact same way you dress, you know? And I think when you're passionate about something, eventually what ends up happening is you end up making it your work, right? And you will actually start realizing that a lot of the times when you make this stuff your work, a lot of the people won't say shit anymore, right? Because at least, because you have so many people today, right? That are in these jobs or that are doing all this stuff, but they're fucking miserable, man. They're just dead miserable, right? But you went and in uni, in high school, and you kept expressing yourself and you kept wanting to find opportunities within fashion or within whatever you wanted to do that you actually felt passionate about. And now you're in a position where you're making money doing it and Monday, you don't drag your feet on Monday. You don't feel like uh, no energy on, mo on a Monday. You know, you feel your Monday and your Fridays are equally the same because you love what you do. And to me, I feel like at the end of the day, you have to be able to understand that criticism is gonna come anyway. The only thing that you have to do is push past it. And again, if you have a circle of friends right now that don't see it, I guarantee you, be your own best friend, be your own best support, and eventually, they will kind of see it and they will actually start respecting your craft and your work and the fact that at least this person is expressing themselves. You know, because it happened to me, you know, like, you know, I have, some of the closest, closest friends, you know, I've known these guys since I was like 10 years old, right? So, and you know, when I was asking to take pictures of my outfits and whatnot, it wasn't always sweet, but I think as we kind of like, as they kind of started seeing how passionate I was, as they kind of started seeing me make money doing it, as they kind of started seeing me, you know, being more vocal, expressing myself even more, they actually became so supportive, right? But before they did that, right, I had to be, I had to support myself first. I had to believe that you know what, I really am passionate about this. And it's not about, you know, validation. It's not about you uh, seeking validation from your friends or seeking validation from anybody. It's about you just being like, I just wanna be on this planet and just do shit I wanna do. I just wanna do shit that I love. And to do that, you have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to understand that people, some people, and especially people that are close to you sometimes, may not necessarily get it. But you have to be okay with understanding that that's gonna pass anyway. Right, so whatever criticism you're getting right now, understand that like, in my opinion, most of us have faced that and some of us are still facing it. The only thing, and if it's not this, it's something else. The only thing that you can keep doing is keep pushing forward and allow that negativity to come into place, but don't dwell on it. Understand that, you know, it's a fleeting emotion. It's something that's gonna take you off the wrong way for, you know, a day, maybe two, and you can go back on your shit. And the more you actually hear it, the less effect it will have on you, in my opinion, right? So the more you hear, oh, you can't even dress, or like, you know, I've had people like, sometimes people leave comments on my Instagram or like on my YouTube and be like, oh yeah, you need to get rid of that beanie. Like the other day I saw a comment, oh, you need to get rid of that beanie, this, it's done, you know? Um, and I'm like, yo, dude, fuck you, man. Like, <laughs> you don't know me, bro. Like, just watch my videos if you like it, like it. If you don't, if you have nothing to say that's positive, keep it pushing, bro. Like, I don't need you on this page, right? So you have to have that, 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 uh, that drive to understand that like at the end of the day, you have a vision of what you wanna do and can nobody come in between you and your vision? You know, so not even a comment, not even a criticism. It's just everything is about you and where you're heading. As long as you have a vision, you have to trust it and you have co to be consistently, you know, crafting. You have to be consistently feeding into it, right? So if it's dressing, if it's fashion that you enjoy, if it's sports, if it's anything that you really wanna do, you just have to trust yourself first before anybody can trust you, right? Before, like, I know, you know, I'm an immigrant from African parents and you think they wanted me doing fashion? No, bro, like, they weren't about that, you know? They wanted me to fucking go be a doctor or a lawyer or something, right? But I realized that in order for me to live um, the way I wanna live, I had to cancel that. I had to not seek validation from my parents. I had to not seek validation from my friends. I had to seek validation from within myself and trust myself that I'm gonna to get to where I'm getting to. And I think the earlier you start, the better it is. You don't wanna start, you know, when you're already like, I mean, it's possible you can start in your 30s, in your 40s, but the earlier you start understanding that like, at the end of the day, life is tough and people are gonna judge you, people are gonna criticize you, but just keep expressing yourself. Keep expressing yourself as much as you possibly can. Because I guarantee you, like I say, those people that are criticizing you ain't doing shit, bro. They ain't doing shit. Even though it seems like they are right now, right? Like, oh, they have the cool friends and they have all this other stuff. They have fears in them too that they they have things inside them too that they wanna do 
um, that they're pushing back because they're like, oh, so scared of how they're gonna be perceived. But you are out there and you're expressing yourself. You're dressing the way you wanna dress. So really just the message in all of this is to trust yourself and to believe that, you know, this is what you're passionate about and you seek validation from nobody but yourself.